Welcome, everyone, to the Real Movie Cast, episode 571. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212, and I'm with Connor Farley. What's up, Connor? Hello. All right, so what news do you have for us today? Right. Um, we got, on Thursday, uh, Big Finish put a uh, post on Facebook saying that there is uh, going to be major announcements this weekend in regards to Big Finish, because it's obviously 10th anniversary week for New right. Who. And um, we first got on uh, Friday the the license to produce Big Finish audios has been extended to uh, March 31st, 2020. So we'll at least be getting five more years of um, audios from Big Finish. Wow. Um, but I think the most important news of um, the weekend came yesterday uh saturday in regards to um the f- i wouldn't say follow up but the next um kind of like series of audios for the eighth doctor now that uh dark eyes has concluded um it's called doom coalition it has paul mcgann in it nicola walker hattie morahan and uh mark bonner um and yeah, basically, it's just it gave us the um, the cover, the cover art of uh, of the um, thing, right? The audio what is the synopsis. Uh, Do you have it? I don't, I don't think there's actually a synopsis as of yet because it it wasn't announced that long ago. Uh, right, but. Uh, yeah, it's basically all we know is that what the cover looks like to it, and um, right. that it, it's kind of like the next kind of series for the Eighth Doctor after Dark Eyes. Okay. Um, just trying to see my notes. I did see a synopsis for it, but I'm trying to remember where I saw it the other day. Um. Mm. Actually, I have it. So, Doctor Who TV UK. Let me read it. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. So, basically, I just want to get in a nutshell here. What this is about. All right, Connor, I'm going to give this to you. And you can tell me. If you want to read it? It's something to do with another Time Lord, is what I'm getting. Right. So I'm gonna and some some Time Lord that every time he regenerates, he retains a part of his other self. Like the you know, hey, I'm oh. listening to you. Oh, it's hey. this. Yeah, the the eleven. The Eleven, a time log who retains each one of his personalities every time he regenerates. We meet him in his 11th year, an insane sociopath. Captured by the Seventh Doctor in confinement on Gallifrey, the Eleven has been contained for many years, but now he has escaped. So he's called the Eleventh? He's called the Eleven. The Eleven. Yeah. Okay. And he's an evil time lord that, besides regenerating, retains his personality, the same personality over and over and over again? Oh, yeah. He, he, he's like a big jigsaw, I suppose. Every time he regenerates, he keeps a part of his previous personality, but he adds another piece of the new. Okay. Uh, I, think it, I think it's working a bit like that. I can kind of okay. see what you mean. Yeah. So this could be a multiple, multi-doctor story. I mean, with the seventh and the eighth. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think definitely Sylvester could come into it somewhere. Right. Okay. Now, was there any rumors? I mean, it seems to me that the Eighth Doctor has the best audios, right? He he's seeming to get like ever since, particularly Night of the Doctor. They're going bigger and better than ever with him. Right. I mean, he's getting the best stories. Hey, what's up, Jacob? 
It's like, I don't know how much you've read um, reviews wise for uh, Dark Eyes 4, but I've heard it get phenomenal reviews. And now this right. actually sounds pretty good. This is now, where I'm going to start off actually with uh, Big Finish. Now, the Do new it. master that, that the eighth Doctor deals with, he appeared in the seventh Doctor's audio adventures. I think, I think it was the something to do with Unit. There was a story with Unit that we covered a while back. Alex McQueen. Yeah. Yeah. The bald guy, yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah, he's been he's been in um Yeah, he's been in some Sylvester McCoy. Oh dear, I'm sure. Yeah. Wow. He's now canon, which is quite strange. As well. Oh, is he? He's canon. The whole of big finish is canon. For eight doctor. Now. So Alex McQueen is some is somehow a canon incarnation of the master. I see. Wow. So, yeah. Although he's, he'll probably never get mentioned ever, but it, he's just now canon. Well, for now it's canon, right? Well, yeah. There could something could come along in ten, fifteen years that completely erases it. Erases out anything that's from that. It's like when Moffat when Moffat creates the War Doctor, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's pretty. I mean, look, it, I get more interested in the audios when I hear about all these cool uh, things for the Eighth Doctor. I mean, really, the Dark Eyes thing looked really appealing to me. You know, um, the first audio I've ever heard was the Trial of the Valyard, which I liked um, with the Sixth Doctor, Tom Baker. But. Uh, and I'm not really big on audios, but I think I, I, would, I would try the Eighth Doctor's audios. I'm not big on audios, but I'd like to listen to Doom Coalition. Because that's all we got from the Eighth Doctor is the audios, so you have no choice. Yeah, yeah. I'd like you to know? listen to Doom, Co Doom Coalition and also Dark Eyes. I think I need to listen to Dark Eyes first. Of all. Well, that's something you can pop in the car. Like, you know how you have uh, audio books... Yeah, you know, I know people don't want to like just sit around or whatever, but you know, if you're traveling, you pop it in the car and you listen to it. If you're going on a trip or whatever for an hour, hour and a half, and it's, and it's available in uh, MP3, so you can put it on your iPod, your iPhone, you know, and listen to it. Wait, what, what, listen to it on the bus? Yeah, on the bus. Going to school, whatever. Yeah, on the train, wherever you know. So yeah, you don't have to be just sitting there like this. Listen to it. I mean, it's, do it when it's convenient. Where you could enjoy it without getting fidgety. Like you just, you know, if you're stuck on a bus for now and eight, like me, I'm stuck on, a, on an express bus maybe sometimes for an hour and a half. That's perfect. Yeah. You know, I could get caught up with, you know, TV shows and stuff on my phone. So, you know, I, I highly suggest uh, everyone to try the Eight Doctors Adventures on Big Finish. Yeah. I'm hoping that we get an announcement today as well, considering that it's a weekend full of announcements that we are getting uh, new who. Big finish. Right. That's yeah, it. now when now if it was New Who, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it just be with the Ninth Doctor? No, or they'd get they'd get David and I think Matt. David Tennant would definitely do it. He's okay. kind of that sort of person. Uh right. that would jump at the chance of doing it. Matt might do it as well, but Matt's snowed under now with uh, right. several major See, films. Here's, here's the thing that would really be interesting. If they did a Russell T. Davis, David Tennant series on Big Finish where we got to see that lady, Christina Del Souza, um, was the companion that there was original planned. And we get to see adventures with him, with her. That would really be awesome. Because technically, he spent so many years avoiding his death. We don't even know if he had other companions, to say the truth. So yeah. the Tenth Doctor could have had a few different companions. We don't know. Yeah. So that would be really cool. I think also in regards to um, there being an actual um, New Who big finish is, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, Russell T. Davis wrote an audio um, well, actually, it's based right. on one of his novels that he wrote for the New Adventures uh, Doctor Who series back in the right. 90s. Right? Yes. Called Damaged Goods. And right. it's now in uh, May, I think. Right. 
Well, I think that's a bit of foreshadowing because I think if if it was to be New Who big finish, Russell would probably write some, right. or maybe most most of them. So, right. and the funny thing is, if it really takes off, the you know New Who Adventures of Russ T Davis, maybe they would do something and film it. You know, despite Moffat being the showrunner, maybe they would like you know have lost seasons or something. Maybe. You know, that would be pretty cool. Actually, there's some news here from Big Finish. Okay, let's go. Um, Doctor Who, the novel adaptations continue. Our weekend of Doctor Who reveals continues with the announcement of five new releases in our range of Doctor Who novel adaptations. Following our previous six releases, including the well mannered War, which is by Gareth Roberts, and um, Doctor Who Damaged Goods, which we've literally just talked about by Russell T. Davis, Big Finish are pleased to, con- to be continuing our audio adaptations of the Virgin Adventure novels in tw- into 2016, starring Sylvester McCoy as the Seventh Doctor. In December 2015, Doctor Who Theatre of War, written and adapted by Justin Richards, who is obviously a very prominent new series uh, book writer and who I think should write an episode, uh, sees the Doctor and Ace and Bernice Summerfield, Bernice Summerfield drawn into a Shakespearean tragedy on the planet Mex- Mexus. Uh, launching at the same time is Doctor Who All-Consuming Fire, where a sinister intelligence lurks on the streets of 1887 London and the Doctor's only hope is to join forces with England's most notable consulting detective Sherlock Holmes as played by Nicholas Briggs. Wow, that could be pretty good. Uh, The release is adapted by Guy Adams from the original novel by writer Andy Lane. Following in April 2016, Doctor Who Nightshade is a forecast adaptation of the classic novel by Mark Gatiss. It's a sleepy English town where the Doctor and Ace's relationship will be tested to the limit in a script adapted by a new to big Finnish contributor, Kyle Siskari. Now, wait a minute. You said Mark Gatiss? Mark, you never knew Mark Gatiss writing in... Mark Gatiss used to write books. That's how he got into no, writing. No, but I mean, he's doing a, a, a big finish? No, he wrote the original novel. Oh, okay, okay. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Adapted, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, then in December 2016, we head to 30th Century Earth for the Doctor and Benny's first encounter with adjudicator, adjudicator Roz Forrester, played by Yasmin Bannerman, and her squire, Chris Sweet. I can't fucking pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the, the spelling is ridiculous for that. Yes, I... Oliver in Doctor Who Original Sin, written, originally written by Andy Lane and adapted by John Dorney. Wow. Okay. Cool news for Big Finish. Now, is there any news about the missing episodes? Because the Underwater Menace, uh, I heard, was scrapped. So, I mean, are we done? Would that stop for... Is there anything? Nothing on missing episodes, right? Probably not. Uh, I, I am a firm believer that despite the um, news to the contrary, that they will find the missing episodes and they will um, release them, possibly 2015, 2016. Um, I believe that to be true. Uh, as far as other Doctor Who news, uh, I guess we will come back with another cast. Uh, this kind of just dropped out. Um, but anyway, uh, anybody who wants to come on early, it's Sunday. I promised anybody who wants to be here, pop in. I actually apologize about that. My internet cut out. I That's okay. Uh, I was just talking about um, 
any news about the missing episodes? We know that Underwater Menace was scrapped. Yeah, why that's been scrapped, I don't know. Um, right. Bit of actually, because uh, it should it should be out. They should have already animated it. It should already. Right. Be out. I don't see what the holdup is. Right. Uh, no, no, no other news regarding missing episodes. Actually. All right. Any other Doctor news in general? Uh. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, there's this list of um, all 117 episodes okay. ranked by the viewers at uh, Doc2 TV. Not by me, but okay, go ahead. Yeah, not by, not by us. Not by, I think, majority of our community, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, Day of the Doctor is first with 9.4% <laughs> um, um, of, I don't, I don't even know how this. Yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah, yeah they, maybe it's they, the most recent. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, then there's Blink. Right. Then there's the Eleventh Hour. Of course. Then there's the Empty Child, the Doctor Dances. Oh, okay. Could it be or Moffat? Go ahead. Yeah. Then there's the Silence in the Library. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. You know what? I think we heard enough. It's Moffat. Because yeah, it's a Moffat. Yeah, Moffat just some that himself. Okay. Look, I love. Moffat's episodes. I love The Empty Child, The Doctor Dances. I love The Girl in the Fireplace. I love Blink. I love Silence in the Library. I love Forest of the Dead. I love Time Crash. You know, I love just about everything that Moffat's done in Russell T. Davis's era. I like some of the stuff he's done as a showrunner. Okay? But there are other episodes that he did not write that are probably even better in some cases and awesome. Uh, I am a big lover of, oh yeah, by the way, Solomon Daleks are like, but I am a big lover of Rings of Akatan. I am a big lover of Impossible Planet and Satan Pit, uh, School Reunion, um, you know, numerous, you know, Parting of the Ways. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, the Utopia, the, uh, you know, the uh, Sound of Drums, Last of Time Lords, my favorite three-part finale, if you will. Um, there's been, it hasn't been just been Moffat. So I, I, I tend to think and feel that this list is just from one person or a Moffat lover, which I love all Moffat and Russell T. Davis, you know. I prefer Russell T. Davis a little more. But we often give Moffat a lot of props on our show. And I have often said he's a genius and he's amazing how he does his stuff. The only little problem I have is he doesn't finish. He doesn't follow up. He doesn't, you know, culminate everything. So one big grand, whoa, I can't believe that. I mean, yes, he did. The Master is a Woman. Holy crap. You know, and he did War Doctor. and. Gallifrey somewhere. Okay. But all these things that he built up from season five, six, and seven fell flat. The voice in the TARDIS. Who the hell is that? I don't know. You know, Madame Kaverian, what the hell is she doing? Is she dead? Is she not dead? How's she travel through time? If she travels through time, then why can't she beat the doctor? Because, you know, it seems to me like she's just like, you know, in a good man goes to war, she's at the mercy of not tra time traveling because she's like getting information from Dory. So, mm -hmm. You know, like, you don't clear up things in a sentence. You don't clear up things in a few sentences. You take an episode. You take a season. So that's the problem I have with Moffat. I love two-parters. I love, I wish we could have a three-parter. But you have Dark Water. And you're like, wow, this is awesome. And then you have Death in Heaven. And you're like, what the hell happened? That's a problem. That's a problem. You go completely, it's like almost as if it was written by someone else. So I do not agree with this list, but I know you want to finish with the list, okay? Uh, yeah, so next is um, Human Nature and Family of Blood, which is actually not Stephen Moffat. Right, and it's great. That also. Was, yeah, that was Paul Cornell, I think, yeah. Right. Um, and then it's The Girl in the Fireplace. Of course. Moffat, again. Pandorica opens Big Bang. Um, Moffat, that's Moffat. I don't, I don't agree with it. Being that high, right? But, well, 
I, I tend to think it's kind of it kind of gets really really difficult if you're taking 117 stories and putting them in an order. I mean that's kind of that's why we like to separate it by season because now you have to go every time an episode comes back then you have to go back and shuffle and you get a headache saying oh well you know my favorite was this but now it's you know listen Day of the Doctor is not the number one episode as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, it was great. We got to see Matt Smith and David Tennant, Tom Baker, you know. I think the mini was even better than Day of the Doctor. <laughs> but um, honestly, the mini of Night of the Doctor was like the greatest mini ever. So um, I, just, I just think that this. The Orton yeah. sucked. So not Orton's, the. Uh, the um, Zygon. Uh, Zy- thank you. Zygon sucked. So. That felt flat. But go ahead. For example, here they're saying that Asylum of the Daleks is better than Fires of Pompeii. Well, I did like Asylum of the Daleks a lot. But is it better than Fires of Pompeii? I like Fires of Pompeii as well. See, the thing is, I liked... This is why I liked Asylum of the Daleks. For many years, a lot of us YouTubers were pounding Moffat to make a dark Dalek story. A thing where they would destroy a planet, they would be a menace, they would be really terrifying. And he basically listened and destroyed a planet and made it dark and made it, you know, you got the grim, dark, oh my God, concentration camps with the Daleks, what the F? You know, zombie Daleks, freaking, they used the nano gene from Empty Child and twisted it and made a Dalek genes. And it was just, I loved that shit. It was like really freaking dark and I loved it with the Daleks. I really did. I mean, I kind of looked at it and I'm like, okay, you know, on the planet, like, you know, this, these Daleks up in space are like soft and the government, they're a bunch of punks. They're, they're like, they're cowards. But then on the planet, they, like, you know, the asylum, they were like petrified of this. You know what I'm saying? It, it's almost as if they like, you know, Daleks kill other Daleks, but these Daleks are like wimps and they're like, oh, let's just throw them on a the planet because they were like probably really scared. And it was just like weird. It was a different take on the Daleks that I really enjoyed. I also enjoyed seeing Amy and Rory because I loved them as characters. Um, you know, and to me, it worked. And I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I don't like that they don't explain things. Like, why is Scarrow there? And I think Moffat tried to explain Scarrow being six different Scarrow planets, but in one of the episodes or something. But anyway, uh, we're getting off topic. Yeah, it's Hassan with Daleks, I like, but you have. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not going to read the whole list because it's 117. I'm just going to like go through my, yeah, yeah. my gripes about this. Um, for example, they've said here that the Doctor's wife is better than Waters of Mars. <laughs> okay, yeah. In what fucking... I like, I like Waters of Mars a lot. I, I, don't, I don't know how it's better than uh, how it's worse than the uh, Doctor's Wife though. Also, Flatline is apparently worse than the Doctor's Wife. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even gonna. Yeah. Um, my nonsense. But first of all, Waters of Mars is very unique. Yes. It was totally different than we've ever seen, and the Doctor was a badass as far as I'm concerned. So yeah. I don't know. We lost you again. You're muted, Connor. All right, yeah, What is the Mars was just fantastic. You know, I remember watching this. I'm like, oh, my God, he's leaving them. I can't believe he's leaving them. Oh, my God, this is a fixed point. Finally, we get to see a fixed point, and then he's actually going away because he's actually obeying the Lord's heart. I can't believe he's doing that. And then, of course, he's the doctor. He can't just go away. He's got to fix everything. So, yeah, Tom. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, um, they're also saying that um, School Reunion was worse than Amy's Choice. I don't agree with that at all. I like School Reunion. <laughs> um, I mean, Amy's Choice is ridiculous. I like it. It's okay. It, there's yeah. nothing really bad about it. Dr- Dream Lord is just the man. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, apparently. Yeah, is better than Father's Day. Oh, God. Father's Day was great. 
Are you crazy? Um, Come out of here, man. I don't even want to hear this. Just Go ahead. Yeah. Um, what is Love and Monsters on there? That better be the last one on the list. Actually, Love and Monsters is second to last, so it's 100. What's the last? Journey of Sensor and Tardis? Fear Her. Where's Journey of Sensor and Tardis? Um, Journey to the Center of the Tardis is um, apparently better than Rob of Sherwood. Oh, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> I don't get this fucking list and rip it up, idiots. Yeah, I, I, and then apparently. Yeah, apparently um, it's. Just hang on. I'm what? I'm just, I'm just reading through it, just trying to find other Jesus. things. Jesus. With this list. <sighs> I don't know. Um I'm just I'm just looking for fucking stupid things, although the stupid things fucking everywhere here. What's the last ten? How about that? Sorry? What's the last ten? The last ten is um The Long Game, which I disagree with. Um, the Lazarus Experiment, yeah, don't really like it. Uh, Night Terrors, don't agree with. Daleks in Manhattan and Evolution of the Daleks. Okay. Uh -huh. Why is that in the bottom ten? Uh, yeah. the, the Idiot's Lantern, yes. Yeah, right. Curse of the Black Spot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. The Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe, of course. Right, okay. In the Forest of the Night. Nah. Ah, I don't know about that. No, it's, it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, so go on. That's it? No. No, you yeah. were going to say something and I interrupted oh, you. Oh, I, I don't know. I lost yeah. track. Yeah, and then Love and Monsters and Fear Her. So they're worse than Fear Her? Yes. No way. Love and Monsters is the worst. The worst. <laughs> They're both equally as no, bad. And no, what's, what's even worse? The cement block the does it. No. No, man. No. It's Jackie Tyler Adventures. No. Last one. That's it. I <laughs> docked for like five minutes. No. Was that the first ever Dr. Light? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. It was the fucking worst. Jesus. It's called David Tennant's Busy. <laughs> That's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta shoot a movie, man. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one's right. fucking Let's Kill Hitler better than 42. I don't get the shit with 42. If you actually watch it and you understand... I liked 42, got, actually. Yeah, it's bloody uh, brilliant. Yeah. Fucking... How hot was that that he's like gonna kill his companion and he's like talking about our regenerate like i was like she said we're talking about regeneration it's like that's pretty damn cool yeah it's a, oh. it reminded me a bit of impossible planet um satan's pit in the fact that it's kind of constrained to one location and it's so like claustrophobic because like the the villain could be in exactly the same room at you as yeah. you at all times that's pretty hot i like yeah. it and well, <laughs> nice pun there. Constantly. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, thanks. Burning hot. Yeah. 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 I, I like that. Like I don't get the shit with it, but I like it a lot. Yeah. I remember seeing. It, I'm like, this is freaking awesome. It was awesome how, you know, moth is in the thing and it's like gets released and he's like, yeah. I just like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> She calls a mom and stuff. Like, yeah, I love you. You know, it's like, wow. That it, was it, great. It's definitely um, Chris Chibnall's best. Yeah. Absolutely. Holy Obviously, crap. Chibnall's he knows how to capture emotion. The, I mean, the greatest thing is David Tennant screaming at the top of his lungs when he came here, what he's saying. Yeah. It was great. Fucking yeah. great. I'd say I might watch 42. Later, yeah. Because I like that one. Absolutely. All right. That's it for today. Well, to later. To later is going to be. Stay tuned for the big Walking Dead podcast. We're going to have the real Walking Cast. Hour and a half finale. 
that's going to be huge. And we got some more real hoping later. So that's it, guys. Thank you, Connor. Thank you. Take care. Bye for now.